Hi, good morning. Welcome to Jerusalem Playroom. My name is Jamika, and I wanted to upload this video real quick. No hauls, no dolls. Just wanted to upload this video uh, to talk about something. So, um, the other day, I uh, had a breakdown, okay? It's a good thing. So, with my breakdown, what it was is that I am experiencing a uh, physical death or fleshly death. So let me explain this to you guys. My body is used to certain things, whether it's food. Um, it's, it's just lusting after things that it wants, it desires. So when I am denying the flesh and I'm going after the spiritual things, my body is angry. My body is going through all this sort of withdrawals, okay? Because I am now going towards the spiritual things. So, by me going towards those spiritual things, I what am I doing? I'm trying to listen to, I am listening to upbeat music. Um, I'm doing things that is um, better for me concerning trying to basically focus on something other than what the body wants so i'm uploading this video to say my son came over here this morning and we were talking because of the crime that's in the city where i live and i'm smiling and you're like well jamika how why are you smiling and that's not a good thing it's not it's not a good thing but it's a great teaching to to let us see how the flesh is reacting when it can't get its way, when it gets mad, when it gets angry. So my son made a uh, statement uh, to me. He was like, well, people look at you like um, you're weak or you're not a fighter and things like that. I always wanted that spiritual side of things. So this is what I have was explaining to my son he doesn't get it because he's he's not on the same level as I, I am so I'm trying to be patient and it's I'm telling you guys it's a rouse it's a struggle rather with me going after spiritual things when you go when you decide that you're going to accept Jesus in your life and that is your first step to going into your spiritual journey, your awakening, or whatever you want to call it, your hero's journey, whatever you decide to call your new venture. So what that is, is that you are being taught on how to deal with things on a spiritual level versus a fleshly level, okay? When you accept Christ, let me make it personal to give you guys an example. I enjoyed going out. I enjoyed the nightlife and I enjoyed the club scene. Okay? There's there's two different types. There's several different types of uh, clubs. So, when I decided to do my spiritual journey, when I was going to the clubs, I was out of place. I didn't fit in. I was looked upon and I actually took myself and put myself in a situation where I was more vulnerable to be attacked okay so when I saw this the first thing that I saw was when I the negative looks you would get a very uh, uh, angry look you would get someone who would kind of say stuff like who you think you are coming in here just kind of slide just uh, things that women would say to you or they would come up and say things like B I'm just joking Th things like that Okay, and so when I was in those situations, I was like, wait a minute. See, now I have, I'm outside of the, I'm, I'm in this territory where I'm more attacked because of my spiritual journey. And these entities, these beings, they are aware of this. We throw it, we, we toss it to the side. Oh, she was just playing. She was just drunk. No, you're not in the right environment. Okay, so. I said to myself, let me move myself out of this environment because these group of women that I'm around are clearly, 
clearly, not only hearing, not only watching, but the feeling, because the spiritual realm is teaching me how to discern spirits. And even though I'm in this situation, it's clearly showing to me no evidence that I'm not liked, okay? So, because of that, I said, well, let me take myself out of this situation and I won't go back around in that environment. I won't go back around those people. Now, going into the spiritual thing is that now I, I do get invited, guys, and I, I want to go so bad. I really do. But there's other things that are more important than that. I'm not telling anybody not to go out. I'm not telling anybody, what do what you want to do. What I'm saying is that there are going to be entities that are going to be more, um, they're, they're going to express themselves more when you're in that type of environment. Now, let's say that you go into the work, church, or your family environments. They may not be as bold as someone in the streets or on the in the nightclubs or whatever, but they're going to give you two, actually, they're going to actually the same thing. So what they're going to say is, they're going to give you a look. They're going to um, say something smart. I had thought you weren't coming. And you're going to you're gonna immediately feel a heaviness on you. You will, you will feel this stuff on you. And you're thinking that, oh, I'm going to shuffle. No, there, they, there's three signs. It's the look, the speaking, and the feel. Your body is putting up, letting you know something is wrong. Now, when you are in the club setting, you may take a shot, you may smoke, you may uh, put, you know, drink, well, not drink, you may take drugs to numb this feeling, these senses that your body is telling you that you are not in a safe place. And if you ignore that, then that's where these attacks are easily to come into. So, I woke up. And I was sleeping. I slept like a baby. I had a dream, but I actually slept like a baby last night. And my daughter called and she said, Mom, is everything okay? And I was like, Yeah, everything is fine. And she so she started telling me about things that was going on in the city. I was at home. And it's funny that she said that because Friday I went to the store, I grabbed a bag of Doritos and a Pepsi. And I told the lady, I'm going to go home. So I actually was in the home, in the house all weekend long because it was beautiful. And I realized that we just had a lunar eclipse. And I was like, these frequencies are still in the air. Even though it was a beautiful day, I decided to stay in the house for the weekend. My son said, you're being scared. No, it's not that I'm being scared because I've, I'm growing more into the spiritual. I'm going more to the spiritual side. I'm more in tune to things. And when you're in tune to things, the spirit will help you to not go places and to not do things, okay? So, I called my mom and we got to talking. Now, as we got, as we started discussing things, let me, ex if you start getting into your chakras with your body, and that's what I'm, I'm starting to get into, dealing with my chakras within the body. There, it's divided into the higher and the lower. The reason why I suggest to you guys about listening to upbeat music, listening to doing things that you want to do, stay in a frequency of, high, of a higher vibration. There are people out here who are dealing in low vibrations. Okay, there are we are in a, we're in a situation right now where we are dealing with people who are empty. There, like, like the movie, um, many of you probably saw, like out, uh, Get Out. There are people who are empty inside. So what these entities and these de demons are doing, I'm calling them entities because it, it goes deeper. So what these entities are doing, it is getting these individuals who, who are empty and putting them in a, a group or herd situation. And so these entities are jumping into these empty vessels. And when that happens, because of the low vibration uh, music because of whatever drugs, whatever alcohol whatever uh, just anger whatever they're dealing with that is a recipe for disaster okay so what do we do about it well it's nothing that we can do about it 
we pray, but the truth of it is, we just have to pray for covering over ourselves. We're in a situation where you have to pray for yourself. Prime example, the, the movie Willy Wonka. Let's just look at that for an example. Willy Wonka made everybody sign a um, NDA, non-disclosure uh, form. Okay? And uh, when they signed these forms, he told them not to do things. Don't go. Don't do it. He didn't, he didn't stress. He didn't say, stop, no. He said he made them sign and told them to listen very carefully. And they went ahead and did whatever they wanted to do, and they wanted to sue. The parents wanted to sue, and he was like, you can't sue because I, you signed the form. And so at the end of that movie, we saw what happened with little Charlie. Um, Charlie wanted to get the prize, but then when he started telling them what they did, the granddaddy was just really upset, and he was like, you know, you were, you would call him all type of horrible man, a uh, man. But then Charlie, he understood. Charlie understood that he disobeyed the rules. So when Charlie understand he disobeyed the rules, he was like, you know what? Let me give you back this token that you gave me, and I appreciate it, and I'm sorry. He passed the test. Because what it was is that Willy Wonka was just trying to really give over the gift, but he had to test Charlie. I'm bringing all of this up and giving you different examples to go by because the flesh is going to, whatever, whatever this entity, the flesh is just, it's going to die, but our spirit man lives on. So, which is why we're going towards the spirit realm. We want to focus on the things that's about the spirit. Now, out of all of this chaos and confusion, what is what are we to do as the American people? What are we to do as believers? And I'm saying believers. I'm not going to say the term Christian. I'm going to try to get away from Christian because not all Christians are believers. Okay? And we all... That's a whole different story, but not everybody is a believer. Many people who watch my channel are not believers. They will say they believe, but they don't. Me, prime example. Let me, let me say about me a believer. I can get up and upload these videos and tell you guys, yeah, this and that. But when it comes to my own personal life, my own personal struggles, like I had this other day where I was really low, I said, do you believe in what you're putting out? Do you believe, Jamaica, that God will make a way? Do you believe that in the midst of you going through, God is still able? Yeah, you want to sit up here and make it look good in front of people, but are you a believer on what you say that God, God will provide? When people are going through, they're going to look at your life. When my son made that statement, going back to what my son made the statement about me, I laughed because I know people have said that I'm soft or I'm weak. But those people that have said those things about me, I don't have to fight physically. I do not have to fight. Now, somebody can say, well, no, no. if they say something, people going to talk. That's what these entities do. They're going to watch this movie called Paris is Burning. In the movie Paris is Burning, it's a good documentary. But what I got out of it is that people will look at you, these entities will look at you, and the first thing they're going to attack is the thing that is uh, one of your flaws. They won't say, oh, your hair is pretty. Ugh, you got this and that. They're going to, in that movie, they, that's how they broke people down is they went after them and attacked them where their flaws was at. So when you got somebody typing you with your, your flaws, you got to look in the mirror at yourself and say, okay, well... I'm made this way. I can't control the way my nose and my eyes were made. I can't control the way my ears. I couldn't. I don't have control of my color of my skin. This is what I was gifted, and I can't unzip this like I do clothes. With our body, we're able to accessorize it in all sorts of ways. Even some people have gone gone deep and deep in, uh They put tattoos on it. They put piercing on it. I got piercings in my ear, um, and I actually have three. So. Uh, on each ear so there's different ways that you can accessorize this body i have I, I accessorize my hair with different wigs so when when people say things about that you don't have to fight physically jesus has informed us that it's easy to walk away your life is more important if you can live a long life live a long life but if you're in a situation where you're in a group of people and these people are attacking and bullying you, you have the right to walk away. Does that make you look weak? To them it does. But God 
is going to deal with them in the spirit realm. What you do is you take that situation that's in the earthly realm and you pray in the spirit and the spirit will deal with that. A lot of times the people that are dealing with stuff that are going through is because of karmic. It's because of things that they put out, even myself included. Things that you put out, things you did, things you said, and now we're in this time where it's coming back and a lot of people are not able to handle what they put out. But they don't realize, well, why is this weight so heavy on me? So they get angry, they're mad, they don't like the way it feels on them. They just, they don't realize that they have allowed this entity to consume them when all they have to do is give it to Jesus. In the other video where I said hurt people hurt people. So now, when these settings come around and you got all of these entities that have taken over these people's bodies and they get together, what do you think going to happen? You, you, what, what, what do you think is going to happen? You think that it's, they're going to get together and have a good time? They coming together to destroy. They're coming together to kill. They're coming together to do as much destruction as they can. But we think that, oh, well, we're going to do. No, if you got these things that, that are there and, and people are coming in and you saying, and it's just not with the club, it's not with the nightlife, the club scene, it's with your job, it's with your family, it's with uh, your church environments. You're coming in there and you want to just maybe have a great time. And you might be willing, but there is somebody who who's, who's actually body has been taken over by this entity. And you, we see these things and we can't understand, oh, that's just not how they are. No, we need to pray. We need to pray for these beings because they are under attack. And I have been a witness to see these entities come in and destroy the whole place. Many corporations are falling right now because of these entities that have gone in and just destroyed businesses. These entities have destroyed everything. They have taken over everything. And that's why we have the scripture that tells us we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're wrestling. We're trying to wrestle with the spirit. When it's impossible for us to wrestle in the flesh, we have to go into the spirit. We have to uh, go onto that side and look at Jesus' life. I'm using Jesus' life. Um, other people are into a meditation. They're into, um, they're, they're, trying to learn the ways about, like I said, about the chakra, because I'm trying to learn about that. So there's other things that you can do to help your inner man, to help to get you to that level where you're trying, a, a spiritual enlightenment, okay? They make, um, we hear stuff about all sorts of names and stuff, and when you really get into your deeper walk and you find out things, you're going to say to yourself, oh my God, this is, they made it seem like it was just so, it's bigger than what we were taught, guys. So, when my son said that, I couldn't, I didn't get mad. Who said it? Well, they ain't came to my face. No, I don't get mad because they're right. I look weak to them because I walked away. I don't have to physically fight. If someone puts their hands on you guys, that is an assault. You have a right to press charges on them. Um, I'm going to, I took a course in the Birmingham, uh, in my city, the Birmingham Citizens Police Academy, and I need to, uh, uh, concerning defense, concerning different laws on ways to protect yourself. I understand that we right now, we have a situation where you have a, uh, you, you have a right to conceal and carry. All I'm, I'm asking is, when I get up in the morning, I'm, I'm in, expecting on going to a place where I can go and enjoy myself and have a good time. I'm going to church. If I don't feel safe where I'm going, I don't need to go. That's just for me. That's what I was taught. Don't put yourself in situations where you don't feel safe. Some people are like, well, you got to protect yourself. Yeah, but this is why Jesus said, if anything happens to your body, we can't, we don't know the day. We don't know the time unless you're on death row, I guess. But we don't, we, the believers, we don't know the day or time when we're going to die. That's why Jesus said, don't worry about your body. What they did to me, they're going to do it to you. But what I'm doing is I'm going to prepare a place. I done made a place for you. So whatever happens to your body, you're going to be with me. You're going to be with me and my father. That's what we're going to, we don't, you don't, you can't, if you, we worry about death, we're going to be like, oh, we'll lock ourselves in. We, we won't go out. We won't do nothing. We'll, we'll become prisoners in our own home. 
And with my son, now I, I said I didn't go anything in, it, in this week. I didn't go anywhere, but I did go outside. I did tend to my dogs. I was watching TV. I had a choice that I wanted to go out, but I chose not to because I'm aware of what is going on. And even now, when I do go out, I try to go out early because I know the younger people, they want to have fun. They want to do things. And there's nothing wrong with having fun. Nothing wrong with having a good time. We just have to realize that we're not the, we're not the believers are not the only one out here. We, we are right now in a, a physical, spiritual war, and we see it all, all the time. So, I just wanted to share this video and uh, just talk to you guys. I'm, I'm actually getting ready to go to church, and I wanted to share this video with you to let you know what is going on. Um, it was quiet over here in my neighborhood, and... Anyway, the, the, the flesh and the spirit are at, at war. If we got so many wars going on, we don't even know what's, what's what anymore. So your flesh wants what it wants, what made it feel good, the pleasure, what, it, what feels good, whether it's eating, drinking, whatever you want to do that, that's flesh. But your spirit is saying no. So you, we have to increase the spirit. And so, again, this is us. Okay, which are which are chakras, but we want to stay above. We want to stay up. We want to focus on these frequencies here, not the ones below our belly, because those ones right there we need to to heal from. Especially with me, with my belly, because of the the swelling, the eating. It, this processed food is not good, so I need to focus on more on the the higher parts, and that's why I'm using my myself for an example. So. I pray that you be blessed. I pray that something is said. But again, what are we to do when we see these these things going on in our community, these things going on in our in our government, these things going on in the world? This is the spiritual warfare. You have your your flesh and you have your spirit. And they are at war right now. And the ones who will not let go of this flesh, they they are going to be they're, they're going to be lost. And your spirit man is fighting but the, the, the flesh, the, the, the enemy is want, want this flesh. The enemy wants this flesh. The enemy wants to consume this body. And many people are lost. And when I mean lost, it's like they can't even think straight. For you to get up in the morning, I there the, for, for anybody to get up in the morning and get dressed, and if you have to take your, your gun with you, and you're not in a, a military situation, you're not in a uh, in uh, law enforcement or whatever, and you're taking your gun to a situation, to, to an area, and if you're quick-tempered and you know that you're quick-tempered, I'm not talking about the ones who carry it and they know how to control it, they took the classes, they took the courses, they trained themselves, but I'm saying for the ones who didn't go through the training and you take that, and you know you quick temper, and and you see these people say, "I wish, I wish somebody would." You see that quick temper. You see them. Would you want to be around that person going out? Because you know that by them being the way that they are, they're quick temper. And and you see this, and for that person to have a a weapon in their hand, you don't know what they may do, because anger can consume them so much where they may end up turning their gun on you. So. I just, I, I'm uploading it because he called me, my son called me, and my daughter called me, my son came over, and we was just talking, and my son just made up some stuff. Well, he didn't make it up, but it, it was said to him, and, and this is what I'm talking about, the family. When, you're, when your son comes back and tell you things that family members have said to your child, they say these things to your child, somebody you gave birth to, and for them to say that to your child, and you really want to tell your child, don't even go back over there no more. Because if they talked about your mama, what are they saying about you? But you you can't you try to let them learn for themselves. But this is this is what's going on. And then even at church, you you and for, instead of them saying we gonna girl, I heard such and such about sister so and so. Well, let's pray for. They be like, what happened? See, they don't want people don't want to bring Jesus in the equation. They just want to hear. And, and gossip, just hearing gossip, and talk about folks instead of praying for folks. It's just this is the time that we're in. So anyway, guys, just wanted to share this. What I was dealing with with my own spiritual journey. What I realized is that my flesh 
is mad. My flesh wants to do things. My flesh wants to sit up here and wants to go out and party. But then the spirit man is saying, Jamaica, no, no, no. Remember when you went, how they look? And I'm talking about it's a look that want to kill you. And then I'm talking about a look that where they want to bump in. That people, they in the point now these entities are so bold, they are, they'll provoke you. You can try to walk away and they'll provoke you. So what do you do? And then that's on another side too. With the, with the people don't realize again with the with the carrying the conceal and carry, you do have a right to conceal and carry, but you have to prove to a court that your life was in danger when you pulled that trigger. You have to have a total of twelve jurors, thirteen, just in case one may get sick, that your life was in danger. You have to prove that. And, and when you look at it, there's a lot of people who are behind bars because they couldn't convince a jury that their life was in danger. Because the juries, those 13 juries that's in the back, the same questions that I'm talking to you right now is what they're saying. They got up in the morning. They put clothes on. Before they walked out the house, they grabbed their blinky. And, and listen to the song. There's a song out there called Blinky. I, I was listening to it this morning because I'm like, they, they made a dance. My Blinky's on the dresser. You, 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 you telling us and you, a jury, you didn't, you didn't, you, now you got this. So the jury is saying, well, they walked out, they, before they walked out the house, they grabbed their Blinky and put it in the car. Drove to wherever they was going with the blinky in the car. Took the blinky out the car and put it on them. Got into an altercation. And instead of walking away, they pulled the blinky out. So the jurors got to ask questions. Well, did the other person have a blinky? If the other person didn't have a blinky, you can charge with murder. So know your laws. Talk with your local police department because before you walk out the house, ask yourself, is this place I'm going? Am I going to have a good time or is something going to happen? And so for me, I can tell you what I do. I just stop going. I got my boom box in there. I got what I need in there. I even bought me a little disco ball. Yes, sister, sister Morel bought her a little disco ball. But I can see, live to see another day. I can live to see another day. I don't have to worry about nobody. My plants, I go in there, my plants just growing so beautiful. I got a whole bunch of plants singing to my plant. My husband looked at me the other day because I was singing. Alicia Keys. And I said, I'm on the wrong tune. But what I'm saying is, before you walk out the door, Ask yourself, is the place I'm going safe? If it's not safe, should I go? Do I know the people that's coming? Do I know the people background? Do I know whether or not little Tasha mama raised her right? Do I know where little Tasha grew up at? Do I know what side of town little uh, Tasha grew up in? How is her family? What type of family she, what type of family does little Johnny have? Does little Johnny, ask yourself these questions. If you can't answer all the questions, then maybe that's not the place you need to go. Do they have security there? It's, it's, if something happened, can the paramedics get there? If something happened, is there a medical person even there? Just in case something do happen. Is there security there in case something do happen? If you ask yourself these whole bunch of questions, you can live to see another day. That's what the song said. My blinkies on the dresser. And it's so easy for you to go get this blinky. But when a life is taken... You have to prove that your life was in danger. I pray this video helps you guys. 
Y'all be blessed and y'all stay tuned for another Jerusalem Playroom. All right. Y'all have a blessed day. Okay. Bye.